Charlie Brown No way All right, we're going to do another audio, and I hope at some point in the next couple weeks to get a Podbean podcast started up, because sometimes I think it would just be better to have the audio up as an MP3, and maybe later use it as a video, but it doesn't matter. This shooting in Colorado, I think, is an excellent example of why the social media companies and the media itself and the Democrats and their followers don't really want to address the issues underlying gun violence because uh, of course gun violence is a matter of decision. Some people make a decision to uh, work out their frustrations by going after the people around them, whether it's other students or co-workers or uh, just people on the street. Remember, the son of Sam Killer was murdering random women that were uh, of the same, uh, I guess, hair color. So what we're seeing today is essentially the breakdown of this nonsense about how guns are the problem and the availability of guns are the problem. When the Colorado shooting occurred, which was, remember, only two days ago, people were willing to essentially uh, put aside a lot of the instant knee-jerk reactions, largely because the perpetrators didn't necessarily fit the profile. Uh, One of them apparently was a transgender, and they are now going to be uh, tried. Uh, uh, One of them is a minor as well. So, we're really talking about a bit of an anomaly here. Now, it wasn't for lack of trying that they couldn't find a way to pin this on the gun control issue or the fact or the lack of gun control because apparently it's come out through the New York Post and I'm trying to find a little more information about it, but um, in any case, the New York Post has reported that just yesterday when a number of gun control organizations and politicians in Colorado went to speak at the school at a vigil in honor of the victims, the students walked out and they basically decided we're not going to be pawns in a political narrative. Apparently what was the what was being chanted when they walked out was two words mental health. And I think it was an appropriate way to address it. Remember the the Parkland shooter, Nicholas Cruz, had severe mental health issues. There were other shooters in the past that seemed to have had real issues with mental health. Remember the two Columbine shooters, a number of the people that came afterward that were copycats, uh, the woman who recently killed herself because she was obsessed with Columbine. These are serious issues that are created by a culture that obsesses over these macabre incidents, even the... And, and they prescribe, in, in, in lieu of an actual solution, what they really want to do is control legal possession of firearms, which, as we all know, will probably lead to more violence, A, because the legal gun owners will probably be uh, easier victims for the illegal gun owners to go after. Remember, the criminals, don't well, they're not going to care whether the, law, the guns are legal or not. It actually makes less sense to commit a crime with a gun purchased legally than with a gun that was purchased from a street buyer. So that's one way it's gonna go up. And the other way is because some of these gun owners are gonna resist and probably be uh, you, you know, killed by the police or something. It's, it's just a fact. So what we're talking about here was the perfect response, in my opinion, by these children and young adults who decided, well, look, we, we're we not going to weigh in on whether we think guns are, are a right or the Second Amendment is a real priority for us, but we're not going to let the death of our friend who sacrificed his, his own health and, and eventually his life in order to save their lives, 
We're not going to let that be used for a political agenda for people like Senator Michael Bennett, who, by the way, just announced that he was running for president. I don't know if you guys knew that, but the, you know, there's another, there's other candidates out there that people don't even know about. So he, he announced he was running for president. There were a few other Colorado Democratic politicians there. There was the Brady campaign, which uh, is directed towards increasing gun control and, and things like that. They thought that they would have easy prey, the same way that they had at Parkland, with, with people like, a, like, you know, the attention seekers that were from that group who's, you know, I can't repeat their names because they'll probably end with a strike, but yeah, it's been really, you know, if there's one good thing that you can take out of this tragedy, it's that these children decided, well, we're going to seize the, seize the moment so that we're not seized up and used for this nefarious purpose. The same thing happened, by the way, a couple weeks ago with the murder at Poway. Okay, the obviously it would have it would worked better for the liberal media to portray the anti-Semitic shooting as a result of the accessibility of guns. But the fact is that a, a gun owner was able to prevent more deaths and save a lot of lives, save a lot of people from being injured as well. Now, when you when you look at the reaction, yes, there were some negative issues that that are now encountered. I believe that some of the censorship now against people like Milo and people like like PJW and of course Farrakhan is a result of this decision. Well, now now we're going to crack down on anti-Semitism on the web because of that, but. They couldn't go after the guns because <clears throat> there was no way to justify it. And also because a lot of the victims rejected this narrative that this was could be politically uh, exploited. Uh, that the shooter was an anti-Donald Trump shooter. Again, in this Colorado shooting, apparently, based on reports, he was an anti-Donald Trump shooter. In Poway, you see a lot of these uh, victims embraced Trump. For example, the, the, the rabbi, Rabbi Yisrael Goldstein, actually said, you know, he, he responded very, very warmly to Donald Trump's entreaties for, for talks and, you know, and his, his counseling and all that. He felt very good about the, the, the phone call that President Trump gave to him, which obviously, I, I'm not, if, if it worked out otherwise and he, he didn't want anything to do with Trump, that's his feelings and everything else. But they can't use it anymore. And what, what's happened? I've seen a sea change, a sea change among people within my own community who are now changing their attitude towards the Second Amendment. They're actually, there are people who have come up to me and talked about how they want to get their concealed carry now. They want to be carrying. They want to be able to defend themselves. They want to be able to defend their, their children who, who come with them to the synagogue or who they take to the park or things like that. People have a right to make decisions for themselves. And I think the majority of people make the right decision when it comes to using their firearms. The majority of people don't use their firearms in order to harm people around them. And uh, obviously there are accidents that happen when people use them unsafely. But on the whole, I would rather deal with the hazards of some people randomly coming out and using the firearms against others uh, un unlawfully than a government that won't protect you, that looks to protect itself, and looks to use you for its own political purposes. That's about it. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also subscribe to me on BitChute and on Minds.com. Those are both at Chef Leopard, and also on Gab, that's at Starscream85, and I'll talk to you later. Bring on the dancing horses And this and all alone Jubilant